Earlier this week, our merciless overlord Ian Hazakaskis gave us two interviews about the state of Shadowlands, and in the process, he managed to piss off half of the community once again. After months of petitioning for some sort of solo queue system, Hazakaskis finally addressed the issue, but to the regret of many, as it seems like the idea is dead for now. In today's video, we will be breaking down the most important parts of this week's developer interviews, and we will show you some highlights from a recent PvP podcast featuring some former arena legends that you might recognize. We will also show you how to get some starter PvP gear super fast this week only with the Wrath of the Lich King time walking event. So stick around because there is a good balance of drama and hope with this week's PvP news and you won't want to miss it. Finally, we will go over Thursday's PTR notes, which include a damage increase to Arms Warriors and some new Fortnite PvP talents, so make sure you stay tuned. First things first though, we have a question for you as always. In recent videos, we asked about your opinions on both solo queue and 5v5. Some people said a solo queue system would be broken and imbalanced for 3v3, but how would you feel about solo queuing 5v5? Do you think it would be a good way to gear your alts? Do you think it would be a competitive bracket? Let us know how you would feel about solo queue 5v5 in the comments below. And with the next patch around the corner, look no further than skillcap.com slash wow to bring you up to speed on everything you need to know for the new meta. Our website features class guides and matchup breakdowns designed by some of the best players in the world. Our videos teach you everything you need to know to improve your skill and rating in Arena, and feature high-level commentary that you won't find anywhere else. So if you want to stay ahead of the competition, be sure to check out skillcap.com slash wow today. So, let's get right into it with some sad news for our solo queue hopefuls. During a recent interview with Chinese streaming website Douyu, lead game designer Ian Hazakostis was asked about implementing a solo queue system. This, of course, came after months of discussion between players on how to make the game more friendly for people who want a way to gain rating and PvP by themselves without needing an organized group. Unfortunately, Ian seemed to put the nail in this coffin, saying that instead of focusing on developing a new queue system entirely, they instead have plans to improve the current group finder, which admittedly is in need of major repair. He went on to say that solo queue might just be a terrible experience for players since the game is so comp dependent in both PvP and PvE. While this is obviously bad news for players who have invested energy into wanting a solo queue system, it was at least refreshing to see acknowledgement that the group finder system is in need of a major rework. In a separate interview with Preach Gaming, the lead game designer talked about the upcoming 9.1 patch and some future plans for the rest of the expansion. One of these plans is the ability to equip two legendaries. While he said this wouldn't happen in 9.1, one, it would likely occur near the end of the expansion. There are some new Covenant-specific legendaries coming in the next patch, and players are eager for a way to combine both class and Covenant legendaries for their characters. Preach also pushed Ian on how brutal the game continues to be for alts, saying how repetitive it is to finish your leveling grind, only to be met with 40 levels of renown and weeks of Torghast grinding in order to finish gearing your character. Add this to the hundreds of games you need to catch up on Conquest, and you have a huge mountain to climb after you reach 60. Although he didn't specify which catch up systems would be reworked, he did admit that the game needs to be more alt friendly. And as someone who personally loves playing alt, I definitely would like to see some catch up mechanics, specifically for the massive conquest grind. If you remember in a previous video, we showed a player who geared his alt entirely from 2v2 and it only took him a mere 1,355 games, which means he roughly spent 22 hours just waiting in the starting room of arena during this grind. Hats off to him. But if you are looking for a quick way to gear your alts this week, make sure to take advantage of the Wrath of the Lich King time walking event. Right now you can queue Ulduar in time walking mode and it gives 200 eye level gear with versatility. Check your dungeon journal in the Wrath of the Lich King section to see what gear is available for your class. The simplest way to find a group for Ulduar is through the LFG system, where you should be able to find a few groups during peak hours. If you want to make a group of your own, take the portal from Orgrimmar to Dalaran in Crystal Song Forest, then just walk a few steps forward to the time walking symbol on your minimap. Look for the time walking master NPC to queue your raid for the dungeon. I was lucky enough to get 5 pieces on my warrior and at 200 item level they are better than the starting honor gear. And with the raid only taking a few hours it is a much quicker grind than using LFG to grind 2's wins on a freshly leveled alt. Back to the interviews though, lead game designer Ian Hezekostas made some huge waves on social media when he talked about the item level power creep in Shadowlands. Preach Gaming asked if item level gaps could be minimized so players don't feel held back from content simply because of their gear. Ian responded by saying that if players feel like they are being held back, then it is simply just a skill issue. Um, I actually, uh, so I'm, I'm actually interested by the premise of the question and I, I disagree a little bit with that. But I think if players are looking at mythic raiders doing, you know, multiple times their damage, frankly, that's a skill issue. Oof. 
Let's just say that the look on Preach's face was a good indication of how the community reacted to this answer. As we have mentioned time and time again, being behind on item level is a huge disadvantage in PvP since you're missing out on so much damage and versatility. So hopefully we get some catch up system in the future because we know the pain of trying to gain rating while being under geared. In some lighter news, the Technically PvP podcast hosted some WoW legends, summoning Azale, Venruki, and Soda to their recent broadcast. They focused their discussion on the Burning Crusade, talking about how its re-release will probably be different than its original form. One part of the discussion focused on how TBC damage is much more telegraphed than Shadowlands damage in Arena. Instead of needing to track millions of different damage modifiers and buffs with weak auras, you only need to look at spell casts and positioning to know if you're in trouble. More obvious, he is casting a long frostbolt, it will do damage. And that's one of the things that I like about it, yeah. uh, is that it was more understandable Same. where damage was coming from, right? It's not like, ah, oh, like he, you know, proc the trinket out his ass and, and then like, you know, use the curing ability and all this stuff. And it's like things that you don't really understand. It's like, <laughs> why, why all of a sudden does this guy eviscerate me for 20K when that guy hits me for 5K? I we highly recommend you watch the full interview, which you can find on warcraftradio.com in the technically PvP section. And finally, we want to remind you that the AWC finals are this weekend, and with $200,000 on the line, the top four teams in EU and North America will compete for the Season 1 crown. On the North American side, Cloud9 will be facing off against Golden Guardians, while Method NA battles OTK. And on EU, we have Skill Capped being challenged by Method EU, while Reload Esports looks to face off against Team Creed. Both regions will be using a double elimination bracket and competition is expected to be incredibly high. The WoW Esports talent team has given their predictions on who will come out on top, but we want to know what you all think. If you're planning on watching the AWC this weekend, who do you think will win in both regions? Let us know in the comments below. In today's breaking news, Blizzard has buffed Arms Warriors on the PTR, but before you panic, the 9.1 damage increases to Mortal Strike and Deep Wounds only affect PvE. The only exception is a buff to Overpower and Execute for non-Venther Warriors which might make Covenant Balance better for PvP. Once again, their weak performance in PvE has carried over slightly to PvP, and the best class in the game is getting even better. Look, if we're being honest, there definitely will be some PvP tuning down the line. At least, we hope, because Warriors can't get any better, right? Please save us, Holinka. One of the classes that saw the biggest changes on Thursday were Priests, who got a rework to their new Mass Dispel PvP talent. When we previewed this talent a few weeks ago, PvPers were not too eager to use it in arenas. Now that it reduces the cast time of Mass Dispel, it might actually find some use in PvP, being a flexible talent option against Mages and Paladins. On top of that, Shadow Priests got some damage buffs to both Shadow Word Pain and Vampiric Touch, with a damage nerf to Devouring Plague. This comes with a nerf to the Clear Mind Conduit, which will make it slightly harder to spam Dispel in PvP. Overall, these buffs will help their sustained damage and will make the already powerful Shadow Play composition even stronger, considering that Affliction Warlocks also saw some damage increases and a buff to the underused Dark Pack talent. Holy Paladins also saw some changes today, with a healing buff to Holy Light offsetting some nerfs to their PvP talents. The most significant nerf was to Divine Favor, which is a significant part of the Holy Paladin defensive toolkit. On our last tier list update, Holy Paladins had remained one of the best healers in the game, so we will have to see how they hold up in 9.1. Rhett also saw a minor nerf to Aura of Reckoning, which admittedly does not seem enough to bring them down from their S tier status. This was slightly offset by a buff to the Jurisdiction PvP talent, which doesn't see much use in PvP anyway. Demon Hunter got a new PvP talent called Glimpse, which will act sort of like death from above when they use Vengeful Retreat, giving them partial CC immunity. We are already getting flashbacks to BFA with Blade Dance being used to avoid stuns. This new talent took the place of Mana Break, which has been removed from the game. This might make the DH Mana Drain spec much weaker, especially in 2v2 where it is commonly used. Survival hunters everywhere are rejoicing as they got some big damage increases as well. This comes after a few months of low representation on the ladder, mostly due to how incredibly strong BM has been since last patch. And rounding out the most important class changes from Thursday's PTR update is a new PvP talent for Element Shamans. Seems like Blizzard is continuing the trend of combining Fortnite and PvP by introducing a new ability to the game that makes a wall that players can't pass through. We will have to see if this will even be viable in Arena since Shamans are fairly bloated with PvP talent options already. The totem also has very little HP and dies easily to one hit. 
With our final PTR update, you will now need to play at least one game a week in order to upgrade your gear at a certain rating. The goal of this change is uncertain, with many players assuming it is an effort to curb boosting. Some players think that this might make the boosting problem even worse, now that instead of simply needing to hit a rating, the rating will need to be maintained in order to upgrade gear. It might also be an attempt to help increase arena activity, considering how much it dips late into the arena season. In any case, this is a bit of an awkward change, and we will have to see how it all plays out. And that that's our PvP news roundup for this week. As the PTR continues to update, we will be sure to keep you updated on all the upcoming changes. Be sure to check out the full Technically PvP podcast on TBC, featuring Azale, Venruki, and Soda, because the conversation is really interesting. As always, thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, be sure to give it a like. If you want to stay up to date on all future uploads, be sure to subscribe and turn on all notifications. We will be keeping you up to date on any other major patch developments, so you don't want to miss out. For now, take care, and we'll see you in the next one.